Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. In this episode of Board Repair Basics, we're going to take a look at the power system architecture of our logic board. We're going to understand what sequence it goes through in order to turn on and what common things may prevent it from, from completing that sequence. So, before we get started with explaining how the power system works, we need to understand what the power system is going to do and the startup sequence that I just mentioned. So, the first thing we need to do in order to switch on our laptop is provide power. So power is going to come from two places. So it's either going to come in from our DC in jack where the charger is connected or it's going to come from the battery. Um, now for the purposes of these examples we will be using power from the charger, so DC in jack. So once we have power to the logic board various power rails on the logic board are going to start up. So power rails are secondary power supplies that provide various different voltages to different parts of the logic board. Because we have, in this instance, on this logic board, 16.5 volts coming into the logic board, but that's way too high to power most of the things in the laptop. For example, our CPU is probably only running on about one volt at any given time. So we need secondary power supplies dotted around the logic board to step that voltage down to more manageable amounts. So in this instance, we're going to have uh, a 12 volt power supply. There's going to be a 5 volt, a 3.3, a 1.2, and probably a couple of other voltage ones somewhere around the board. Once all of these small voltage rails have all started up, we're then going to have full power to the system management controller. When the SMC sees that all of the power is OK and the laptop is ready to turn on, it will then initialize EFI, which is Extensible Firmware Interface. In old person's terms, it's the BIOS, basically. However, BIOS is no longer a thing, it's now EFI. So the EFI will then execute a series of instructions that tell the laptop how to get going. So in short, it basically tells it to look for a bootable source, find an operating system there, and start that operating system. Once the operating system loads up, it will take control of the hardware and handle everything from there on out. And at that point, you have a working laptop. Now, from a no power situation, where you press the power button and nothing happens, it's most likely that there is a fault with one of the power rails on the logic board. Um, because one of those power rails being missing will cause the SMC to not provide that all system power good signal and it will not continue to load up. You may even find that there's no power at all. So the first thing we're going to do when we're faced with a no power situation is we're going to check all of those power supplies and make sure that they're actually working and switching on. So if we move on over to our schematic of our board uh, on page three, we'll find the power system architecture. This is a, a simplified diagram of all of the power rails on our logic board. And if we take a look at it, initially it looks a bit daunting, but there is actually some fairly common sense to this. So over at the top here, we have our AC adapter in, and we have our battery input. So there are our two possible power sources. Now, on most Apple laptops, you will have two major power rails that must be present for anything else to happen. Those are PP3V42 and PPBus G3 Hot. Now, PP3V42 is what is going to provide power to the SMC and tell the SMC to turn on and activate. And then PPBus G3 Hot powers more or less every other rail in the system. So we need both of these to be present to do anything at all. In addition to that, these two rails are both fully independent. They are not powered by anything else. They are the first two things that switch on in order to, in order to provide power to everything else. If we have a look along the top here, you can see that we have PP18V5. That's power 18.5 volts DC in from the charger. And then we have 9 to 12.6 volts coming up from the battery. Those both meet up at the top line here. And as you can see, after going through a couple of power systems, we get PP3V42, underscore G3Hot. So that is power 3.42 volts. So there is our PP3V42 rail. So that is along the top. And if we follow that all the way around here, we have SMC power good. And that's going to come all the way down the side. And if we go down to here, it comes out at the SMC. And it actually comes out at the SMC as 
SMC reset L. So what this means is when this line is low, L, the SMC will be in reset mode. Reset mode meaning not on, it's not ready to go. So when PP3V42 comes online up the top here, this input here, SMC reset L, will become high. It'll have 3.42 volts on it. And that tells the SMC that it's ready to turn on. So that is how we turn on our SMC and tell it that one of our two rails is now online. The other rail, PP bus G3 hot, is a bit more simple than this. So if we check it out here, we can see PP bus G3 hot is this rail coming down the side. And as you can see, it's labeled there, PP bus G3 hot. Now, if we actually look at this line, you'll notice that everything else is branching off from it. So, for example, we have CPU vCore, that's our CPU power supply, is coming from there. Then we've got this fella here, so this is the U7200. This fella here is providing our 5 volt line, our 3.3 volt line, and our 1.2 volt line. Um, so, that is also being powered from PP bus G3 hot. And if we go further down, we have another power supply here. That is labeled LCD backlight. So there's the power rail that goes to the screen backlight power supply. And down here, we've got another little combo dude who's providing 1.5 volts and 0.75 volts. So as you can see, all of these, all of these secondary power rails are all being powered from PP bus G3 hot, which itself is wired directly to our main power supply coming off of the battery and coming out from the AC adapter. So PP bus G3 hot will always be up so long as there is power getting to the motherboard. And likewise, PP3 V42, as long as that power supply is all okay, that will always be present as well. Whereas all of the other secondary power supplies are all dependent on PP bus G3 hot being present. So that is why PP bus G3 hot and PP3 V42 are the two most important power rails in the laptop because without those we can't do anything else at all and everything else will fall over if they're not present. So now we understand how power is distributed throughout the board to power various subsections of the board, in the next episode we can take a closer look at one of those power supplies and see in detail how it functions and how we can begin to understand the way that it might fail in the event of liquid damage or other kinds of physical damage. Thank you very much for watching, leave any questions in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now!